Uh, chapter 12 is about Monte Carlo simulation. So what is a simulation? A simulation is just an imitation that reflects the operation of a real-world process or system over time. So in a sense it is a model, it's just that in most cases we will simulate something, we will model something, a performance of something over time, right? So it will consider multiple days, weeks, or hours, minutes. Uh, many real world uh, can be simulated and they, they have to be simulated often because there are no uh, simple models that we can use to solve them. For example, we considered, if you recall, queuing systems. Um, uh, queuing systems we only considered uh, systems with um, uh, identical servers, right? For example, we consider this is server 1, server 2, server 3, and one waiting line, right? And then we can go to this server, to this server, to this server, right? And then that's, that's the most complex queuing system we were considering. But what if there is, for example, another waiting, another server here, right? Or what if these are non-identical servers? For example, this is fast and this is slow and this is slow, right? If they are non-identical. Such a queuing system cannot be solved easily through analytical methods, but we can solve it through simulation. We can, we can consider, uh, right, the server, certain distributions of service time, certain arrival um, uh, distribution, and then we can we can actually run a simulation and learn something about this system, for example, something like average waiting time or time in the system. So basically simulations are useful when other models fail and uh, and, and they can add, you, we can solve with Monte Carlo simulations quite a lot of things. One comment here is that uh, we, we run simulations rather than we solve them, right? We, we talked about solving optimization models, we consider uh, running simulation models. We use them as an anal analytical tool as before. We can predict uh, what, what uh, the effect of certain changes will be to existing systems. For example, we could say, oh, there is a system like this where we are trying to change and we want to introduce here, for example, better training and we will, ex we will speed up processing on these servers. What impact will it have on, for example, average time a, p a customer spends in this system? Or we can consider them as design tools, which basically w w which we use when we don't have a system to analyze and improve, but we want to start a new system, for example, start a new company, right? And then we're thinking, oh, we want to have so many cashiers, will that be enough? What's the waiting time going to be? Or other other questions like this. Now, what do we, why do we call it Monte Carlo simulation? Because it's a kind of simulation where we have uh, random numbers and based on random numbers we generate random events. So we will need here uh, random numbers from a uniform distribution but then we can actually uh, convert them to through mapping or some other transformations to uh, a, to other distributions. How do we generate uh, random uniform numbers? Well we can use a certain function called RAND uh, in Excel. So I'm going to show you how it works in Excel. I can use a RAND function, we'll basically type equals RAND to get a number. This number is between 0 and 1, f a fraction between 0 and 1. It, is, uh, it might be equal to 0 and it has to be less than 1, excluding 1, including 0. And uh, one important thing to notice is that every time you refresh or edit anything in the spreadsheet, this number is going to regen be regenerated because it's a RAND function that will be recomputed, so a new random number will be uh, generated. If you press F9, there's going to be another random number, again F9, again F9, you see, random number changes, it's always between 0 and 1, and different values. Now what if I want an, a, an integer number uh, between 0 and 99, uh, so this one is, uh, in, uh, this is random uniform number from 0 to 1, including 0, excluding 1. And if I want a random integer or uniform integer, integer in 0 to 99, then I, I can generate it by using this random function, right? I can put the same ra function, but I can say uh, multiply it by 100. So I get actually a number between 0 and 100, but with a fraction. And then I can do, what I can do is I can d drop the fractional value by function truncate, truncate or round down, and you have to say how many digits after comma, no digits after comma, after point. So basically this gives me an integer number, and again you see if I refresh, 
32855393 the number gets regenerated so i can i can use this function truncate to generate truncate numbers of 100 times rand uh, to generate random in uniform integer numbers from uh, 0 to 99 and then i'll show you later on how to do the mapping of those numbers to other distributions other discrete distributions now each uh, simulation will have um, three basic steps. We first have to design an experiment. So if we are simulating something, we want to uh, have a model of this th something. For example, if you are simulating a queuing system, we want to have an experiment that simulates it. Then the, the second thing will be, we, don't, we cannot rely on just one experiment, so we want to replicate the experiment, and usually it is done a lot of times, uh, for example, a thousand times, five thousand, ten thousand. We, from each experiment we obtain some value of performance measure, something that we're interested, for example, from queuing we will try to obtain some waiting times or time in system in each experiment. So I want you to see that uh, if we replicate experiment a thousand times, we will get a thousand values, for example, for average time in system. And then we have to do something with a thousand values for the same thing. Well, we, we can use statistical tools such as right histograms, confidence intervals, hypothesis testing um, to, to find out something uh, meaningful based on, on a thousand experiments. Right? And this should give us, of course, not perfect but quite accurate uh, um, estimates on, on certain parameters which we might be interested in. Now I want to mention at this point also that there is, exists something called simulation optimization. Right? This is just simulation, but you could run optimization by saying I will run the simulation many times, for example trying different parameters or different designs, and, um, and then I will choose the best design or the best set of parameters based on the simulation. Right? Sometimes there are systems that can automatically do this. So that's simulation optimization. Now, how do we do random number mapping? So consider this. We have, for example, service time, which can be one, two, three, or four minutes with these probabilities. Now, this is 40% chance, and this is, for example, only 5% chance. So uh, when I generate this, right, I want to have four minutes occurring much less frequently than one minute in this example, right? How can I obtain this? How can I achieve this? Well, I can, I can achieve this by using a mapping. I can take uh, for example, uniform integer numbers from 0 to 99, the ones that I generated right in Excel using this function truncate times truncate of 100 times rand, and I can map those numbers, sufficient num uh, or appropriate number of those numbers to each of the service times. So how do I do this? Well, if I if I have 100 numbers here, basically each of those numbers with uniform distribution has the same likelihood, has 1% probability. If I want to have service time 1 minute with 40% chance, then I have to have 40 numbers in this range mapped to service time 1 minute. So basically what I am doing here is I will take the first 40 numbers from this range uh, and these are from 0 to 39, right? It's not too 40. If you take it 0 to 40, that would be 41 numbers. From 1 to 40, it would be 40. But from 0, it has to go to 39. So it's 0 plus 40 minus 1 that we're, we're getting 39. That, so that's the first 40 numbers which we map to one minute service time. And then what we do is for the next service time, two minutes, we need 35% probability. We need 35 numbers from this range. So which numbers? We cannot take the same numbers. These are already allocated, assigned to one minute. So I'll take the, the, the next 35 numbers, starting from 40, right? We finished at 39, so we start from 40. 35 numbers starting from 40 will be 40 plus 35 minus 1. 40 plus 35 is 75 minus 1, 74, because we don't want to have too many numbers. We want exactly 35 from 40 to 74, we have 35 numbers, so these numbers are now mapped to 2 minutes. And then the same thing, 20%, so 20 numbers from 75 till 94, next 20 numbers, and then 5%, so 5 numbers starting from the next one after the 94, so that's from 95 to 99, you can see this is 5 numbers. So if I map this to 4 minute service time, I have I will achieve 5% probability. Now, if I want to use this mapping to generate random service time, what we will do is we will first take a random uniform integer. For example, here we have 93 
uniformly distributed integer number between 0 and 99. So for 93, if I have a random number, right, 93, right, so if the random number is 93, so what is the 93 in which area, in which range is it for? It is in this range, right? So 93 is in this range. So if 93 is this range, this is mapped to three minutes service time. So from this, we know for this random uniform integer number, we generated three minute service time, right? If I have another random number, let me refresh my Excel spreadsheet, for example, for 20, if the random number is 20, 20 falls in this range, right? So this is mapped to one minute. So I, I've generated one minute service time. So that means I going back, I have running out of space to put these arrows. So 20 is mapped to one minute. And so again, I ca I'm able now to generate uh, numbers like service time with appropriate um, probabilities. Now, what I want you to see is that because I've assigned a larger number of those integer uniformly distributed numbers to one minute, one minute is going to occur much more frequently than, for example, four minutes. Four minutes is going to only occur 5% of times, whereas one minute is going to occur 40% of time because there are 40 numbers here and there are five numbers here. So in the, the following videos and slides, I'm going to show you three examples of simulation. There will be queuing system simulation, there will be inventory system simulation, and then the last one will be project simulation. I want you to uh, remember that these are just examples of simulations. Uh, you can simulate uh, systems with different structures, with a lot of different assumptions. So please remember that in all cases, we're just simulating uh, example uh, cases. Uh, in, in all cases, we will do first design experiment and try to replicate it and try, try to perform analysis of performance measures based on those replicated experiments, although in some cases I will just stick to one experiment because it's too time consuming.